that you bless Rocky Mount and give us the strength during this uncertain time. We ask that whatever we do in our lives, we do to your honor and to your glory. And God, bless this time we have together to do this business of your people, for your people. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'll ask the clerk to uh, do a roll call. Council number nine. Here. Blackwell. Here. Joyner. Here. Walker. Here. Dautridge. Here. Bullock. Here. And Miller. Here. Okay, great. I'd like to uh, tell everyone, welcome everybody who's watching us uh, live uh, streaming, and like to thank Council Member Walker and Miller for joining us electronically. Uh, as you can tell, we are practicing social distancing here and I uh, encourage you to do the same thing at home as we go forward. Uh, with that said, I'll bring uh, item number four before the council, which is the approval of minutes of a special call city council meeting on March 19th and a regular scheduled meeting of the city council held March 23rd, both of 2020. Recommended action is to approve. Seven. Second. Uh, move, uh, motion made by Councilman Miller, second by Joyner. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item five is consideration of minutes and recommendations from a special call committee of the whole meeting held March 19th, 2020. Did we just do that? No, sorry, well, okay. <laughs> Update city's response to COVID-19 city manager, Rochelle Smaltoni, discussion and direction to the city manager. And that was already covered in item four, I believe. Uh, so at this time, um, so I have a motion from my second from so Joyner. Council meeting that happened, and behind was the committee All right, Knight move okay. second. Uh, Joiner, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Okay. At this point, uh, city managers ask that we remove item seventeen. And Councilman Daltridge has asked that we table 2021. Uh, so, Manager, anything you want to add to that? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Councilman Daltridge, any reason you want to add for 2021? Well, I have a concern. Um, I think we need to consult the UNC School of Government and our attorneys in the North Carolina Department of Commerce, Main Street, regarding these uh, grants. Um, that we offer, not just these that are coming in front of us. Uh, I've derived this from the 2017 UNC School of Government, Tyler Bogland, who wrote, um, when state constitutions across the nation were written, they included gift clauses to ensure that state and local governments did not make gifts to private entities. In North Carolina, a local government isn't even allowed to make a donation to a charitable nonprofit entity. A lo local government can enter into a contract and pay a reasonable price for a valuable public service, such as a contract to manage a homeless shelter, but the government cannot make a donation. And then just this year, um, Mulligan wrote in the UNC School of Government, the North Carolina Constitution allows governments to grant cash or property to individuals or businesses for private development only in very limited circumstances, such as affordable housing for low-income persons. Uh, then it references uh, Section 4, Article 11 of the North Carolina Constitution, or to provide business location incentives when necessary to attract substantial job creation and tax base that might otherwise be lost to other states. And that references a uh, case, uh, Meridy versus City of Winston-Salem in 1996. That is a high bar. Private facade improvements is important, but it doesn't meet those standards set in case law. Currently, there is no holding in North Carolina constitutional law, nor have researchers identified precedent from other states with similar constitutional provisions that upholds making cash payments to induce private owners to invest in their own property for the purpose of private facade improvements or private revitalization. This does not prevent a government from accomplishing its facade improvements and downtown revitalization goals. It simply means the government should use other tools described in his post, and I can provide that to anyone. I'd like to ask uh, please attorney if he would yeah. uh, uh, address that in our city manager before we move forward. Well, I'll need to look at these issues that he raised. Uh, I haven't looked at the policy. If you've raised questions about the constitutionality of 
Well, I guess we would ask. We're just asking to table this until the next meeting to allow those questions to be answered by our city attorney. Okay. Uh, city manager, do you have any? Well, I, I would be curious to um, be a part of that discussion because I know that um, in many communities, even in North Carolina, where these kinds of assistance are used to incent private owners to invest in their properties. And so I don't, you know, I, I'm surprised to hear that there may be some constitutionality uh, around this because it's been pretty standard, I know, in many um, cities throughout uh, North Carolina and really throughout the country. As a matter of fact, I think um, I've, I've at least had the um, opinion that we were behind the curve as opposed to being in front of the curve, that we're starting now to do the same kinds of things that even our neighboring cities have been doing for many years. Also, I think you have to look at the um, outcomes of these incentives. And I know that since being here for now over two and a half years, I'm starting to see these incentives to really incent people to do the kinds of things that we want them to do to revitalize the um, downtown. So I would be curious that if this is taken away, I don't know what would be substituted because it takes capital, it takes a lot of capital to bring those buildings back uh, in the downtown area. So if the city isn't standing there, um, you know, helping, not, I mean, $10,000 really is not a lot of money when people are making millions and millions of dollars of investments in some of these um, some of these places. But um, certainly I'm, I'd be very interested in um, hearing more about the constitutionality piece of it. And I'm just like to say... Um, well, if you I could, um, so we, 17 uh, city managers recommended that we remove that from the agenda. No, not the city manager. Not the city manager. Not. You recommended that? No, seven, 17 no. is about the third um, party collection. That's that's what I'm recommending. No, 17, not 21. That's right, 17. 17. Right. So so I just want to do it one at a time, since obviously we have some discussion. Yeah, perhaps, that, perhaps we'll keep the agenda as it is, we'll get to 20, and then we'll talk about tabling at that time. The tabling is a vote. It is, that's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, does that work for everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, item 6, the community update, city manager. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor and members of council, uh, several updates for you. Of course, um, today was a not the best in terms of uh, weather. We did have outages uh, that lasted really from 6.45 a.m. through 2 o'clock p.m. There were a total uh, number of customers that lost power was approximately 2,300. The peak time for outages was between 8.45 a.m. through 9.45 a.m. with approximately 1,400 customers without power during this time. The longest sustained outage was on Oak Level Road at the intersection of South Halifax Road. The outage lasted from 6.45 a.m. through 9.30 a.m. and affected 97 customers. All power was restored by 2 o'clock this afternoon. In terms of just a uh, update for you um, regarding the federal COVID-19 stimulus funding for the city of Rocky Mount, as of um, today, we're hearing that we have been authorized $4,798,801 in federal appropriations for uh, services related to the COVID-19 event. The overwhelming majority of that amount, $4,367,324, is for our transit system from the FTA to the Tar River Transit for continuation of our rural and urban transit operations. No state or local matching funds are required. In terms of community development, $309,806 will be received from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to the City of Rocky Mount under a special allocation through the CDBG 
program. No local matching funds are required. Public safety will receive $121,771 from the U.S. Department of Justice to the Rocky Mountain Police Department through an emergency supplemental funding program. No Local matching funds are required. In terms of just 5% of eligible cost, and the state of North Carolina may provide the remaining 25% 25 reimbursement, all utility disconnections until further notice and late fees will not be assessed during this time. If you are struggling and need help with your bill, please contact the business service I would like to remind you, if you can, stay home and know that during this pandemic, the city of Rocky Mount is working to ensure you continue to receive excellent municipal services. To highlight the incredible work of our employees are still doing during this time of uncertainty. We have launched our City at Work campaign, which incorporates the thank you signs residents have placed in their yard. Whether answering customer calls, collecting garbage, repairing a line, or responding to posting on the city's Facebook site. If you have not done so, please fill out and send in your 2020 census form. In March, you should have received your form in the mail. The census will determine funding for housing programs, schools, hospitals, economic development, and much more in our community. You can respond online, by phone, or by mail. For more information, or to respond, visit 2020census.gov. Finally, to ensure our citizens are well informed of the latest information regarding the coronavirus pandemic, the City of Rocky Mount has launched a Citizens Resource Center on our website. There are a number of local, state, and federal agencies and organizations providing exceptional services and assistance during this pandemic. And this information can be found in a centralized place on our website to streamline the way citizens can access the information only and will be updated as new initiatives and news becomes available. Citizens should contact organizations or businesses directly for additional information. We encourage citizens to access this site to stay informed of all the assistance available to our community. That concludes my update. Thank you. May I have any questions for Manager? Um, Councilman Dalford. Madam Manager, on the utilities, that um, Governor Cooper weighed in as well in Order 124 requires Rocky Mount to send to the Utilities Commission a weekly report. And as you know, I asked for a weekly report. 
and I request that the City Council and Mayor be included on that mm -hmm. report as well. And if you can add the information that was previously presented to us on a weekly basis, I ask for that as well. Okay, certainly, and I just received that information um, this afternoon, so I'll review it um, in the morning and make sure you get it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman uh, Miller, do you have something? I think Ms. Chris. My question pertains to the collection of yard waste and bulk items. I understand that the street crews were augmented, our environmental services workers helped with those collections, but uh, they're not being collected consistently. And uh, I just wanted to know what would be able to tell my constituents. Well, um, they're, they're really not being um, used to augment. Um, they're, they're being used to substitute for. What, what's happening here on, in terms of the operations is that in order for us to comply with the stay-at-home um, order, um, we have to rotate crews in and out. So the streets uh, crews are being used in this rotation so that you know the the staff can um, adhere to uh, that mandate so it's not like you know we're adding street crews to environmental services they're being rotated in and out and of course that does slow down um, the process for collection I would say um, to have people to continue to put their yard waste uh, on the curb, we certainly will get it. Uh, but when you're in a pandemic crisis like we're in, where we have, um, you know, the normal operations of the city uh, is not normal, if you will. I don't think it's normal in any city across the, the country. But um, just have them to continue to put, put it out there and we, we definitely will get it. Our highest priority, again, is the residential collection. Because if you have a problem, we, we haven't seen a real problem until we start leaving uh, residential uh, collection garbage on the street. So that's why that is our highest priority. Not that yard waste and bulk collection isn't, but um, given uh, the operational limitations that we're facing, um, this is the process that we're, we're going through now. And we do thank you for the challenges and, and how well you have done with your team, Rochelle. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else has a question or observation? Of course. Yes, uh, uh, Councilman Jordan. What, what are we doing for those workers that are being put on the line to go through the extreme extremities. Are we making sure some type of support system for as mental, some support system there for them so they can have some resource uh, when they are just going through some tough times with the demands that have been placed on them? Well, we encourage um, all our employees to uh, stay in contact with the Human Resources Department. There are a lot of challenges out here, um, not only on the job, but I'm sure off the job. Uh, that is why we have, um, and I thank the council for uh, its support on this, that we continue to pay our employees uh, their salaries, regardless of whether they are rotating or you know whatever their work schedule uh, is. We also um, will be uh, launching a uh, lunch uh, on a weekly basis for uh, our staff utilizing the um, restaurants and the food trucks that are central to Rocky Mount, Rocky Mount only. And that's a way to also support the small businesses within the um, city of Rocky Mount. So we do stay in contact with, um, with our employees. I think the department head, heads do an uh, outstanding job of reporting if there are problems or issues that they're seeing and we um, address them, you know, straight away. Thank you. Anybody else? I just have one thing. Um, 
Madam Manager, I'll give you information specific for um, side of collection as well. So I just I'm not asking for a move. I'm just asking for consideration, yes, case by case. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks, Madam Manager. I will move on now to number item seven, which is presentations and recognitions. So the proclamation of the city of Rocky Mount, whereas the week of April 13th through the 17th of 2020 has been designated as National Community Development Week by the National Community Development Association to celebrate the Community Development Block Grant Program and the Home Investment Partnership Program. And whereas the CDBG program provides annual funding and flexibility to local communities to provide a decent, safe, affordable housing, a suitable living environment, and economic opportunities to low and moderate income people. And whereas the home program provides a funding to local communities to create decent, safe, and affordable housing opportunities for low income persons. And whereas these two valuable programs have made tremendous contributions to the viability of the housing stock, public services, and the economic vitality of the city of Rocky Mount community. Now, therefore, I, C. Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the city of Rocky Mount, hereby proclaim the week of April 13th through 17th of 2020 as Community Development Week in the city of Rocky Mount. Social distancing. I didn't want to go to the top of anything. I was say that. Can I get a copy of that? Second proclamation of the city of Rocky Mount, whereas April 2020 marks the 52nd anniversary of the Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the 37th anniversary of the State Fair Housing Act of 1983. And whereas the State Fair Housing Act of 1983 and the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968 and the Rocky Mount Fair Housing Ordinance prohibit discrimination in housing due to race, color, religion, sex, nationality, handicap, or familial status. And whereas all North Carolinians have the right to live in the community of their choice without fear and on the same terms as their neighbors. Whereas the Rocky Mountain Human Relations Commission, through coordinated efforts with the North Carolina Human Relations Commission Fair Housing Organizations, Concerned Citizens, and the housing industry promotes broader housing choices in Rocky Mount, understanding the State Fair Housing Act and the Federal Fair Housing Act to encourage integrated communities and or neighborhoods and works to ensure accessible housing for the disabled and to eliminate discrimination in housing. Now therefore, I, C. Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, do hereby proclaim April 2020 as Fair Housing Month in the City of Rocky Mount and commend its observance to all citizens. Okay, item A, which are petitions to the public, will not be held due to the safety of citizens, the council, and staff pursuant to the governor's social distancing order for COVID-19. Which brings us to item 9, it's consideration of the minutes and recommendations from a regular scheduled planning board meeting held March 10th of 2020, uh, a review of requests and recommendations by the director of development services or his designee. So this is the public hearing, right? 
recommendation to the That's right. So uh, I'll need a motion. We can go through and read this. All right. Motion made by Blackwell, second by Joyner. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. We will defer the uh, consideration of the public hearing, which is item A, 9A. All right. Um, item 10 left blank intentionally. This item was removed to be placed on the April 27th, 2020 agenda. Which brings us to item 11, which is consideration of ordinance amending chapter 2 of the Code of the City of Rocky Mount, entitled Administration, Article 4, entitled Emergency Management. Recommendation is to adopt the ordinance. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by uh, Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second made by nine. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 12 is consideration of petition for annexation number 316, which is 3786 Weatherford Street. Recommended action is to acknowledge the receipt of the petition and two, to adopt resolution ordering city clerk to investigate sufficiency of the petition. Can, can I get clarification? The address that we have on the um, request from the manager is 3786. If you go down into the deed and the other things, it's uh, 3817. So, which is So I asked for that clarification as well, and was told that the the address on the agenda is correct. You know, I mean, this is property that was gifted to them. Correct. But, but does it make a difference if the what we're passing in, in the documentation is, has two different addresses? I guess is my next question. Well, the uh, uh, the legal description goes. Is it, is it no legal there is. Yeah. That's control. That's well, if, if the city attorney's... Well, it's coming back to you, right? This is just to uh, acknowledge the city clerk to adopt resolution yeah. so that she yeah. can yeah. In yeah. investigate yeah. sufficiency yeah. of the petition. Okay. Councilman Daltrey. Yes, that's a motion. Right. Sure, that's why I was asking the question. Okay. Motion made by Daltrey. Is there a second? second? All right, second by Blackwell. Uh, any discussion? Any additional discussion? That being said, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, by like sign. Item 13 is consideration of application for one a new taxi right license for Melvin Hines. Recommended action, action is to approve issuance of a new taxi right license as recommended and authorized the city clerk to execute the same on behalf of the city. So moved, okay. Moved by uh, Knight, second by Joyner. Is there any discussion on this matter? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. Motion passes. Item 14 is consideration of ordinance amending chapter five of the code of the city of Rocky Mountain titled Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 4 entitled Building Construction Standards, Section 5-109, entitled Electrical Code Adopted Additional Requirements. It amends ordinance to refer to the current electrical code as adopted by the state and removes additional requirements to modernize and update standards for consistency. Recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by... By bullet, second by Blackwell, or was it? Okay, and then uh, with that said, uh, discussion, council person uh, Miller. Yes, my concern is for the safety of individual one citizens that are downtown in those buildings and secondly, I understand that it would reduce, I'm scared an echo here, I don't know if you remember, it would reduce the cost 
you know, the first bring the Gothic buildings, but on the same, at the same time, they will increase the risk to those people who have invested properly in developing their business. If you have a fire down now, those old structures go in the heart. What did she say? I, well, I, I would echo. Uh, I would echo Councilwoman Miller, and I guess to um, to Mr. Deaton, I would ask: Has the fire marshal reviewed the proposal, and why are we reducing the fire district instead of increasing it? Um, and, and to echo what Councilwoman Miller said, are there old? Um, wooden framed in interior um, buildings. Um, they're two story, usually on the bottom story is a is commercial, which is my understanding commercial is required to do that. Upstairs are gonna be residents. If you do have a fire, I think that's a, a safety hazard and um, it's gonna put the people living on the second floor at risk. And, um, and I guess the big thing is, uh, has this, the fire marshal been consulted? Yes, yes, um, we are not reducing the, uh, the boundaries of the fire district. That's just to show you the scope of, of where this is effective. So back, that map for reference is when um, we adjusted this in 2014, the fire district itself, but our electrical code had additional standards for that. And uh, in that specific area, it required people to do the maximum, which was metal jacketed conduit, braided cables, the whole nine yards. And if you read it, literally, it would say, you know, inside a center block wall or inside enclosed walls. So we want a reference to the, the latest code, our, our current code reference, uh, 2005 electrical code. They're, they're well beyond that. So we want to reference that and be consistent. And we have checked with other um, jurisdictions asking about this when this kind of came up. And they said, what, what do you have the extra uh, requirements in there, what's the purpose, you can still do that when it is required of you based on the code, and that's what we will do, but we're not going to require the maximum extent for every project. But address my question about commercial, please, because commercial is required to do that, correct, in commercial building? It depends, it depends on, it's case by case on how they do that. So you're giving flexibility to make your decision based on state code and then you're we're not relinquishing people from being responsible about renovating buildings the quality of the materials or the level of um, investment they're making as far as what meets code and what protects public safety but what we're also are seeing which i can speak to knowledgeably is that rocky mount has a reputation in eastern north carolina of being overly, um, overly hard on small business investors, overly so, such that our codes are stronger and more strengthened than everybody else's. Everybody's downtowns aren't burning down. You know, the light switch turns on the same. It's the same materials, the same property. So my question to you is: Are you aligning our um, ordinances with other ordinances in other cities that are the size of Rocky Mount and that are obtaining the same types of goals. It seems to me if we want to incent downtown development, we can't make it so hard to develop downtown that it doesn't get done. Correct. Um, just turn that on for you. Uh, we, we certainly looked at the other groups, our, our chief building inspector called around asked around when it came in because when you do normally look through this it's the additional requirements didn't apply to 99 point you know whatever percent geographically of the city so this came through and he started asking questions around and got with the chief fire chief so you know do we need to do this and there are some cases yes it is that you know stringent requirement is still going to be required but we want to revert back to the state electrical code the most recent adoption so those people that are developing have a consistent um, look. So they're turning in plans with sealed drawings and everything, and they're based it on theirs, and we're not aware that we have this extra requirement, which is uh, significant and higher than what the state 
has adopted. So we wanted to sort of mesh that with the state and be consistent with others. And all the plans are approved per your review and yes. planning department, yes. planning board. So if it's a case where it needs to be done, it would be pointed out, correct? Absolutely. And I don't think any of us are in the profession of environment. Uh, that's why we have a chief, and if the chief agree with you mm -hmm. and your perspective in the ruling of the state uh, requirements, then I have no problem with you. You know, I was just wrong, but when we had the slum board in Guadalajara downtown, in the inner city, and multiple people died. She talking about on Atlanta <clears throat> Avenue, which was a home. That wasn't. That, that was wasn't due to. Yes, it was not personal, no, it was a private residence. A private it was residence. Dilapidated property. Yeah. It was a dilapidated uh, home. Yeah, typically, um, if I may, most of the fire district regulations typically relate to um, stick built structures and the amount of that. So this electrical was just a little bit far and beyond. Uh, at the time, I think it was reasonable and, and required. But uh, those additional requirements do not mesh with the latest adoption of the code from the state. So we are not lowering our standards beyond the state, but we're really making some adjustments. Adjustments to be more consistent with the state, with the state and others throughout the state. Well, we are lowering our state. We are lowering the, the bar. And if I hear you, the fire chief is who you consult but not the fire marshal. Well, we would uh, we asked we went through this process because we had a couple come in that had their um, plans architecturally you know stamped and, and sealed and said you know we're following this code uh, this is requiring us to uh, with it within a wall now exposed wiring you're still going to have to meet you know the advanced criteria so it is a case by case but to have someone. Uh, redo a wall and close the wiring. Um, usually the metal jacketed is for uh, strikes or anything to to stop electric shock and to stop a spark, but if it's within a center block or brick wall, it's, it's an added expense that um, is higher and above than what is normally required. And I'm just wondering how one developed another developer is doing if you all haven't received any uh, official plans from uh, the developer. So it sounds like to me, in reference to what one of the council members stated, it's based upon hearsay. What somebody's doing this, supposed to what somebody's doing this. I'm doing this to my project, but now they're not doing this to their project. Uh, it's two different projects, but I'm clear on that. In, in my understanding, if we are not uh, putting anybody in safety uh, uh, or harm's way, unsafe um, environment or harm's way, then I don't have a problem with it if it's according to the state uh, uh, code. Can I ask just a hypothetical question? I, I'm, I'm assuming here, and I just want clarification, that if you go into the state and the service is particularly old, doesn't meet the current state codes, you're going to require the service to be put in to be new. Depending on what the use of the building is, you may or may not require conduit to be used. Um, so if the occupancy is going to be apartments upstairs, retail down below, uh, depending on what's being sold, the combustible nature, etc., you know, that would all have an impact into the proper terms of the process. Yeah, there's layers and layers. Sure. Um, we, you know, yeah. we have old knob and tube, yeah, we're going we're gonna to make you advance up to, to some uh, Romex at least, and right. then from there, the type of use indicates the, the expanse and the protection that you would need, and all that's spelled out with that state code. Okay. What well, other cities are using this state code uh, abiding by that? So you look at I would say everybody, I would hope. Uh, they may, they everybody may, but yeah, they may be using it, but they, they may have referenced an older code at some time, but uh, I believe it's 2017, the latest. Any other questions from Mr. Deaton? No. All right, we have a motion on the floor with a second. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. Okay. Um, motion passes. I voted no for the record. All right, Councilman Miller and Councilman Daltridge voted no for the record. Which brings us to item 15 on the agenda.
which is consideration of the declaration of declaring a certain city home to personal property, which is one Derek Truck V, as in Victor, 4473 Altec model on a 2005 International 7400 as surplus and authorizing disposal by donation to Nash Community College to be used in their electric lineman training program includes the clawback agreement in the event the lineman certification program ceases to exist. Recommended action is to adopt the resolution declaring property surplus and authorize donation and to authorize the mayor to execute the clawback agreement on behalf of the city. Do it. Second. Moved by Bullock. Second by Daltridge. Is there any need for discussion? All those in favor vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. Okay, item 16 is consideration of the following recommendation from the traffic engineer. That's to adopt a no parking anytime on both sides of Ravenwood Drive from west of Raleigh Boulevard to Recreational Drive. Recommended action is to adopt the ordinance amending the traffic control ordinance map. Do I have a motion? Alright, a uh, motion by uh, Councilman Bullock. Was that a second from Miller? Alright, is there a need for discussion? All in favor, I'm just about to say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, but like sign. 17, we agreed that we were going to not to, that was going to be pushed out to the next, to subsequent meetings. Uh, item 18 is consideration of municipal agreement with the North Carolina Department of Transportation to add pedestrian signals that signalize intersections on Sunset Avenue between Church Street and US 301 at an estimated cost of $150,000. City will be reimbursed 80% of the eligible expenses up to $120,000. The recommended action is to approve the agreement and authorize the mayor, city clerk, and finance director to execute the same on behalf of the city. All right, we've got a uh, motion by Miller, second by Bullock. Is there any need for discussion? Well, I'm, I'm certainly in favor of this, but I'll go back to what I've uh, mentioned earlier about Sunset Avenue, um, more down to between um, Winston Road and North Old Carriage Road. There's no really no sidewalks, uh, no signalized intersections. In fact, I went for a bike ride with my wife yesterday and crossing Sunset. We took our lives in our own hand. Um, there's no grocery stores in Ward 5, and we have um, Little Easterburg right down the street where people walk. And I would like for the city manager to look at that area um, to help enhance the pedestrian traffic because a lot of uh, people are having to walk to go to the grocery store and don't have access to it. And in addition, I've mentioned before over there by the mall, Walmart slash Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, that whole area over there, um, especially on, on Sundays, a lot of people are walking and crossing the street there, which is a hazard. And we really need to pay attention to pedestrians because we don't need an accident to occur. I fully support this, but I would like for other areas to be looked at. Uh, and, and I guess I question why can't we add to it or is there a limit of what this is right here um, being offered by the state? Sunset Avenue is a NC State controlled street, and our transportation advisory committee has tried several times to get additional funding to it. I appreciate that. It's just, I hope you hear what I say. Yep. Any additional discussion? Thank you, Councilman. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed by the like sign. Which brings us to item 19, is consideration of community block development grant agreement with the Rocky Mountain Housing Authority relative to the down payment assistance program. Recommended action is to approve the agreement and authorize the city manager, director of community and business development, finance director, and city clerk to execute the same on behalf of the city. Do I have a motion? So moved. All right. Moved by uh, Knight, second by Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? All those in favor, please vote uh, by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by like sign.
we were having a discussion on items 20 and 21. Councilman Daltrich had spoken to the constitutionality of 20 and 21 and asked that uh, we move this to the next meeting until that question can be answered. And uh, I stopped the conversation just to uh, to get to this point in the agenda. And I, I'm not sure where we are. Perhaps, Jeff, could you speak to that, um, at least in terms of... Before you speak, can yeah, I... Please, yes. I think we should move forward with uh, development of downtown and it's uh, to be placed on the... Uh, if, if there's anything that's not legal or anything that we approve is not correct, then you should come back and, and let us know. That's what, I, that's what we were having a look at. Right. So I think we should move forward with the recommendation of the our city manager. Can I ask the manager to speak about what her perspective is related to why we need the program and what you're asking us to do? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, with the um, downtown business assistance program in particular, um, currently the policy requires that there be a um, CO or that the property qualifies for CO in order to be eligible for the uh, program. What we're stating here is that oftentimes <clears throat> when you have um, properties that are in such bad condition, it's very difficult to uh, say that this property right at this moment uh, is ready for occupancy. And so this gives the flexibility for the um, administrator of the program to allow for the um, uh, funds to be made available uh, to the developer and uh, the city will secure its program, its, its contribution by deed. So we're not really out of anything, but it does help to um, assist a developer uh, with continuing to, um, you know, make advancements in terms of, of the uh, work that they're doing on their building. Just out of curiosity, um, how does that, how is the contractor decided, or do they come to you and make grant for this, or make application? What's that process look like? Yes, this is a program that's administered uh, in the Community and Business Development uh, Office or Department. And uh, they make application. The application is reviewed um, by the staff there. And then they make their recommendations for uh, approval. So that's basically how that's done. And the deed would uh, help the city secure our investment, correct? Exactly. In other words, if we didn't do that, then the property becomes ours. Correct. Mm -hmm. I fully support that. And we do show how these grants uh, generate multi-level type of growth downtown, right? I would say that um, yeah, for the past two years or so, and I've seen it pick up, uh, wouldn't you say, assistant city manager, uh, particularly over the last year when we have really um, put this out there uh, in the community, in the downtown community. So this is exactly the kinds of things that you want to see happen. We have to incent uh, developers and potential developers for coming here, just like we do um, for the larger industrial uh, recruitment that is done in the city. With no deed that we ask them other than what they expect to create jobs. Correct. And, and my, my support for this revolves around the fact that um, Rocky Mount runs on small business, even though we have great industrial partners, you know, Rocky Mount, like every other city in the United States, depends on small businesses. And in our downtown community, um, we have highly prioritized building out downtown. In fact, we uh, adopted a pro forma around the event center that depends on downtown being developed. We can't meet our pro forma requirements with the event center without making downtown work. And um, I'm, I'm pleased to see that um, the manager's office is looking forward and looking at how to um, help and send new investors downtown and still secure the city's position of liability. I think that corrects a lot of problems that we've had in the past. I don't know if um, the assistant city manager wants to add anything to that. Or? Uh, yes, okay. uh, Councilman Miller. 
Do you uh, have something you want to say? Yes, if the event that the grant recipient does not fall through, what legal action does the Well, uh, there would be a deed of trust and uh, a note and a contract, and if there's a default, the city would foreclose on the property. So it would protect the city's interest. Well, uh, uh, the city will invest their money, and right. this money, our money, rather, and uh, if you know they sell it and they, they get the money back, presumably it will probably you know support the the indebtedness, but it'll be for the amount. Let me, let, let me raise one other issue uh, since we're talking about that security. Uh, if, if, you look at the, if you look at the recommendation that talks about going <coughs> to a contract with the city, and then there's a comma, and then there's a language about the promissory notes and the deed of trust for 24 months, I don't see that language when you get down to the policy. It Tell stops the at the contract. Correct. So we need to implement that in the policy, correct? Uh, well, I, I don't know whether that's intentional or an oversight or what, but it, there, there's no provision about security. We, it would be an oversight. It's done or it needs to be in the policy. So can we, we can add that same add the language, same to, language the, to the policy? You have to add that right. last clause, which, which correct. requires, a, if you see what I'm going to do, you can see what I'm talking about. Maybe count from the doctor. Well, as a small business owner, proponent of downtown, as I am downtown, um, I'm in favor of anything that we can do, but I also think that we need to be uh, prudent in our actions, and that I'm raising a question that I read that I think is applicable to this one and the next one, um, and I would agree with the attorney because I was going to bring that up if this moved forward. Um, and I also think that, I mean, we're putting... We, we need an answer to it. We're also giving grants, and we have given grants in the past that goes against what I think the state constitution as presented uh, in these articles. But we also, um, if, if we want this, if we want downtown to move, why are we going to give someone a grant and then also if we want it to go quickly and investments in downtown? Why are we giving 24 months? Uh, 24 months is two years. I, I, do, I don't understand. And you know, if we're going to give the city money to invest in downtown, which again, uh, I, I think there's a question there, why 24 months? Um, and, and are we doing credit checks on the people to make sure that they, they have the funds to upfit and to redo a building if we're going to invest our money into that? So we do not have to go through a um, securing the buildings? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council, Natasha Hampton, Assistant City Manager. This is a matching grant. Um, the $10,000 that the city provides also has to be matched by the um, applicant. In addition to that, some of the severity of the buildings in downtown vary. So depending on the amount of um, restoration needed and revitalization needed on the buildings. We um, the staff felt that 24 months would provide for um, some of these buildings that are more severe in, in rehabilitation efforts than others. When do you get do you get the money to, as the small business person? Do they get the money before they invest the money, or how does that work? It's the the, the applicant has to spend in the city um, rebates based on the spend. So the the applicant would have already made the investment. That is correct. So it's no need for it. Right. So it's no need for a credit check, you know, because you've already put the money in. That's correct. Right. Does the purchase of the building count for that investment? Does the purchase of the building count for the investment? Don't you match with the work, not the building? Right. The, the, this grant is based on the, um, the, the building repair. So it seems to me that uh, this would help incent and continue to move our downtown forward. Um, and I, I, again,
I just don't have an uh, issue with it. Okay, so I think uh, I'm looking for either a motion so to move. Table. Second. To table? To move forward. To pass the motion. Yes. With the, with the language. With the with the language. Get friendly amendment to update the language in the policy to with the whatever that is. So <laughs> we're, 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 let's get that right. That, that even matters, right? It, it, right. It, I've got a motion here to approve as the policy with the caveat that the policy and the actual loan documents uh, match in terms of covenants required. And I have a second by Councilman Knight. And then is there a need for discussion, additional well, discussion? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Blackwell, I'm that you... That's for amendments. Yeah, the amendments, right. Well, would part of that amendment possibly be um, accelerating the time going from 24 months and reducing it down since we're um, very anxious to get downtown moving? But listening to staff, I think they already vetted that and um, came up with that uh, 24 months based upon um, what they have already experienced. So, and you don't get the money to spend the money, right? So, it's right. they can put people in a position right. to try to move faster on, on development than they move safe. So, given that time. Just, just make sure there's a lot of confusion out here. I've got to spend twenty thousand dollars before I get ten thousand yeah. dollars in every every possible scenario. Whether it's one year, two years, yeah. I have up to two years mm -hmm. if I've been approved. But I have to prove to you that I have spent twenty thousand dollars before I get the ten back. Yeah, yeah you spend you spend that twenty, but. You, you may need to do a lot more work. Sure, no, I understand. It may be, maybe $100,000 where it's done. Yeah, I get it. That's correct. And you have to have a CO before the money is given. Is that what I heard? Well, no, that's what the amendment is. Yeah, we're changing that. Okay. Because it's the improvements that might be needed are needed prior to the CO being accomplished. So maybe 24 months to get the CO, is that what you're saying? Yes, the amendment in this item allows for the city manager to um, determine um, or authorize the um, advancement of the rebate before a certificate of occupancy is obtained, which is the current structure of the VBAP program. Okay, but you're not relinquishing the other protective aspects of the city's assets. That is correct. Okay. You're not. So really all we're asking all you're asking, rather not we, all you're asking us to adopt is to release that CO requirement on the front end before receiving the money and put it on the back end. And then wow. if it's not done, even if they spent the $20,000 and we matched it with 10, if the CO is not obtained, then we can still go into foreclosure and recoup our investment and proceed with someone else with that property development. That is correct. No, I understand. If, if in fact we actually choose to foreclose, I'm not saying it had to do that. Covenant. You know, because again, it was okay. Well, then I have a motion on the floor. Yes, sir. And I have a second. Is there any additional discussion? Good question. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. Daltrey's opposed. Motion carries. Item right, twenty-one. Uh, consideration of the resolution approving administrative policy number 2.36 entitled Policy Residential Facade Improvement Grant. And uh, the recommended action is to adopt the resolution. So moved. Motion by Knight, second by Blackwell. Any discussion? Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, again, the uh, same reason I gave earlier. And, um, I wonder why this is going to be administered under the Human Relations Department. Um, and then um, it's we're going to assist five property owners in a year for $25,000. That's seem it's significant if you get it, but there's no matching. And I even think there was a councilman that used the term um, earlier to have skin in the game or leverage. Um, and I don't think there's anything here except for providing money. Um, and 
And then it indicates also, I've got a question because it says property owners whose property is located within the designated boundaries and or designated neighborhoods are eligible, but I don't see a map or where, where it's indicated. I think that's probably important. Mayor of City Council, uh, City Manager, Arthur Jones, Human Relations Director. We have a number of neighborhood um, organized neighborhood associations that are recognized up in the Human Relations that we already work with. And we have some of our original funding that was allocated for a beautification project. This is just an effort to allow the current funding to uh, address uh, additional needs just in case those, those funds are not spent. Those uh, neighborhoods will have to be, uh, homes will have to be uh, residents of homes that are 50 years or older, which is currently a part of the program that Community and Business Development has already approved some funding for repairs. So in a way to kind of pick up some of the gaps that may have been left there, if there are some funding left in this part of money, those same individuals would be able to uh, apply for the facade grant to also uh, uh, address some of those needs. We have all the neighborhoods that are currently recognized or work with the Human Relations Department. There are 18 neighborhoods and they range in the world from uh, Southeast Rocky Mountain, South Rocky Mountain, North Green, Hillsdale, uh, all across the city. The majority of those neighborhoods rely to lie the downtown area and they represent property owners who have properties that are 50 years or older. But there is an exception where if you are not in one of those neighborhoods, but you are recognized by the city and human relations, you may also still qualify uh, under those guidelines. Either we need to change the language or we need to um, include them. I, I would work with a lot of these, neighbor, these neighborhoods, and these neighborhoods have worked extremely hard to make these improvements. And whatever necessary language we need to change, we don't need to hinder these neighborhoods from moving forward with the beautification that they're doing. Can we get a list of those neighborhoods? I mean, that doesn't feel like an unreasonable request. Sure. If we're going to map that out to the resolution that it should tie out, unless the criterion is simply the house is 50 years old or older. Correct. Oh, so that's the only criterion, the house has to be 50, the structure has to be 50 years or older? You either have to be one of uh, the, there, there are a couple correct criteria there. You either have to be in a recognized neighborhood association, mm -hmm. those boundaries, and or you have to be in a resident that's 50 years older. So if I'm, if I'm in a designated neighborhood, I could be, my house could be inside of 50 years and still Correct. be eligible. Yeah. If I'm outside of that, then my house has to be 50 years old or older. Correct. And that's pretty consistent with most of the housing stock in Rocky Mountain. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's only five, it's, we can fund up to $25,000, right? This Correct. Is what Correct. With existing funding, and then we can do up to five, but maybe if the funds are a little bit less, that's what we said, up to five, we may do two or three, but we're trying to make the most expedient use of funds that are available and within a budget year. So is the language on um, section two, page two, top of the page, should that be admitted or is that part of it? I think it's just maybe where we copied and pasted uh, the neighborhood beautification program and didn't delete it out. Can you read that page? What page? For page of, of this section that we're on, of the um, residential facade improvement grant, page two. Are you, are you following me? Mm -hmm. um, funds are available, also available through the neighborhood beautification program okay. to assist the neighborhood organization subdivisions with entrance point signs and other types of beautification projects. Um, and then, and then, and then yeah. again, are we going to either take out the designated boundaries or, or make it just so it's 50? Um, well, for clarification, the original funding was for that purpose. And as we're working through the process of trying to address a, a, a blanket policy that would represent every neighborhood, uh, originally we talked about 
the possibility of beautification projects for subdivisions within our neighborhoods. If you look at our older neighborhoods, we only have probably one or two subdivisions that well that are actually there. All, a lot of our neighborhoods have several points of interest. So trying to put together a policy or a program just to address those little neighborhoods have been kind of challenging. So we still have those funds available and we can address the, the, the neighborhood signage issue with the current funding. But if there's funds that's left out of that pocket of money and we can go back and assist some of those original applicants that community and business development was able to help but still have some existing needs, this funding could cover that same, same gap. Okay, I believe I have a motion on the floor. I have a second. Uh, is there additional discussion? Yes, ma'am. Councilman Miller. There was quite a bit of discussion earlier, especially in comments from the city manager about the need to have the control central line signage so we're trying to do an additional grants. This will be decided on by the Human Relations Department. And so will those also be centralized under the city manager? Uh, that, that, um, that particular organization uh, restructuring that I spoke about earlier is, is still under advisement, but certainly we would want to um, uh, include any and all loans and grants that are made available to the public uh, from the city. So they would do, the, in other words, the department would do the paperwork and uh, we would ensure that um, they're meeting the eligibility requirements for the grant and, um, you know, just go from there. So this isn't a, a loan, this is a grant, and that would be the difference. Okay, with the grant, this being a side grant for residential there, the side grant the appearance of the exterior, particularly as it fronts the road. What is there any requirement that the house have a good roof on it or any of those things that preserve the integrity of the building? If you notice in, <laughs> Go ahead. If you, if you notice in one of the guidelines, we talked about properties that have already been approved through community business development for some repair work. And so those properties that we are looking at would also be a, a part of that same, uh, same group. So they would be qualified for two separate funding sources? If the need is there. Because we have a lot of projects out there that there are still, once the, um, the original home repair program has exhausted the limited amount of funds, there are still some projects in our whole neighborhoods that still have some existing needs. Can we call Thank you for questions? those answers. Well, that's where we are. Are there any additional questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, by like sign. Aye. Our previous item 22, which are appointments. Uh, the only new appointment that I have is uh, for Stephen Larry Cedarberg uh, to fill my unexpired term, which expires on June 30, 2020, for the Business Development Authority. So moved. Moved by Councilman Miller, is there a second? Second by Joyner. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So I move. <laughs> all right, that's a motion and second by everybody. <laughs> Blackwell and Joyner, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Because this is this is going to be just like this, and everybody's talking about it, right? Yeah, so pick this because this is supposed to be the peak. Yeah, I mean, I, we only got to do it once. once that's right. Once. That's right. I mean, you could bring them in here. You could have them in the television. I think we ought to do it. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I, 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 just, I, I, I think you're flexible. What do you like? I think it makes more sense to keep them downstairs. And the flood would be easier to bring them all the way up here. And you just have a podium down there with a camera on them that we can see.